Hey guys, it's Joel here, uh, owner of HM Precision Painting here, painting company. Uh, finally back. I know it's been a while since I did the last video. Uh, been a busy past couple of years, been busy running the business. So a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things that I could talk about today. Uh, so main goal for today's video is just going to kind of to keep it short. Uh, go over the past three years since I did one for year one, year two, but I'm still missing year three, four, and five. So this is going to be my sixth year. 2023 is my sixth year in business. I started when I was 18, um, you know, started knocking doors there senior year before I graduated and sold my first job before I graduated high school and produced it uh, shortly after I did. So um, just kind of kind of look through my notes here. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my paper because it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot to talk about in one video. Um, but hopefully this helps you kind of realistically see what you will be uh, doing around year three, four, and five, that you stick to some of the principles that, uh, you know, shameless plug that the Painting Business Pro course teaches you to stick to. Because, uh, you know, all the results that I have are easily achievable as long as you follow Eric's, Eric Barstow's course. Uh, you know, it's not one of those things that I wanna plug. Um, it's just the best thing for you if you're looking to start a business, if you're young. Yeah, you know, even if you have, you know, you've been a painter for 20 years, It'll help you tremendously. Uh, it's way more expensive now than it was before, and I'm sure it's going to get more expensive. So, um, you know, definitely it's something I recommend investing to. So, just to get right into it, so year three is year 2020. So, I'm sure everybody remembers pandemic year. Uh, so, that year total revenue that we did, um, and if you want to see what we did year two in the first year, go back to those videos. They're in our channel. Um, so. Year 2020, year three, we did a million dollars in revenue. New construction with it, we did around 720K of revenue. And then for repaints, so residential repaints, interior, exterior, uh, cabinets and decks, we did about 325K. And, uh, and so we did a lot of new construction that year for sure. And we finally hit the million dollar mark that year. Um, now, some of the challenges that we had that year was one of the biggest ones was getting leads. So the reason I had to do door to door is because I wasn't getting enough good quality leads coming in. Uh, so that was really the only way to get quality leads besides using paid uh, ad services. So uh, we had to do door to door, but that year, we that was the biggest challenge at the beginning of the year. Um, and then the other challenge I had, and I'm just gonna kind of talk about the challenges first and go into the wind. Uh, the other challenge I did have that year was just managing all the new construction, having to check all our subs there, having to check the repaint subs, having to do the estimates, having to do the phone calls, having to do the business admin. Um, there was just a lot of systems I didn't have in place and now I do. So that was one of the challenges I had that year. Um, but the wind. So biggest win, I'd say this is still the biggest win I've ever had in this whole business is doing Facebook ads. Facebook ads pretty much eliminated the need for me to do door to door and it, it just went crazy. I mean, I was getting so many leads I didn't even know I was scheduling two weeks estimates. Like I was scheduling estimates two weeks out rather. So uh, it was crazy. So we figured that out. That's not something that to ask me, uh, not just yet. Uh, that's still something that I'm not too familiar with. I pay a guy thousand dollars a month that handles my SEO and those Facebook ads. So he's the one that knows about that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that we did or, or win was stop doing door to door. So, you know, you, I'm not a fan of door to door. Like, I love it. I just want to get out there. I'm just bored if I don't. Um, I do it because I need it. So I do it because it's the best thing and it's the thing that's going to get me to my goal. That's the reason for door to door, um, but not like something that I enjoy. Um, so, so that was a win. And then the other one was getting a lot of leads to our site. So like I said, I pay my SEO guy thousand dollars a month, quite a bit of money to, to spend begin like at, well, at a beginner stage. So, um, you know, that was another thing that, that we were winning there, getting a lot of leads through our site. So reviews, posting stuff on Instagram, on Facebook, all that stuff started to add up. Um, so now moving on to year 2021. All right. So year 2021. So that's year four. Uh, total revenue we did that year. So we did around 840K of revenue. So I actually brought it down around 150K. And new construction, hear this, we did around, around 415K. 
and repaints, we had 430K. So we actually went from doing new construction and, and repaints like this to now doing it like this, 50-50 pretty much. Um, so that was quite a big of a difference. Um, so challenges, one of our biggest challenges that fourth year 2021 was hiring good subs. You know, everybody says it's hard to find good workers. It is, honestly, it is. Uh, but you definitely have to, really, I think, you know, just talking to your sales rep, um, your Sherman Williams, Spectrum Paint, whatever you use, um, and just kind of networking with your guys. Sometimes that's actually the best thing. A lot of painters know other painters. So that's one of those tips I'd recommend doing. That's a work for us. Um, so that was one of our challenges of getting a lot of good quality subs. And then the other one was getting to 50% profit margins. So that's another thing, you know, it's, it could come down to sales. It could come down to a bunch of different things overpaying your subs. But that was one of the challenges that we had. And the other one was uh, we actually, I would say, I wouldn't say it's a challenge, but we stopped using subs on new construction. So pretty much, you know, we got to a point where they weren't making good money. I was spending way too much time managing those projects that we didn't really make that much money in. And, uh, and so it just didn't work out. Builder didn't want to increase the pay. So we just stopped it. So that was one thing. We just stopped doing subs and just kept our employee crew, which we have about five to six employees typically has fluctuated around there. Um, just kept them doing new construction. So that was kind of the challenges, uh, the wins. So we did hire more subs. So that year I remember I did a bunch of, uh, interviews with subs. So putting out Craigslist ads on Facebook ads, talking with my guys, interviewed a bunch of subs, kind of actually got a feel for how it is to interview, how to feel when somebody's not gonna be a good fit. I learned a lot of lessons that year, starting people, uh, having people do one job, everything going great, second job, they don't show up, no call, no show. So it's big challenge there, um, but we did end up hiring more subs, so that's a win. And then we, since we cut off the new construction, we gained a lot more time to do those estimates for residential repaints. So I saved a bunch of time, honestly, per week. I would say I saved like, I mean, about eight hours easily a week uh, by not doing new construction with subs anymore. And then um, the overall, it was overall better profit margins too. So that full year, at the end of the year, the we just had more profit. So even though we did less revenue, we did more profit and that was just because we did more of the good work and cut off more of the bad paying work. So it kind of balanced out and we actually did more, more, uh, more profit that year than the year before, even though we did uh, less work. So that's year 2021, year four. Now moving on over here to year five. So 2022. All right. Year five. Sorry. I had to check that the camera was still going. So year five was last year, 2022. So total revenue we did that year was 830K. So pretty similar to year four. Uh, now this is where it starts to get interesting. So new construction, we did about 310K. So 310K, right? 310,000. Uh, repaints, we did 520K. So now it, it went from this to this to now this uh, with repaints to new construction. Biggest challenge that year, and it's still to this year, my biggest challenge personally, you might actually have this, pretty much this might come easy to you naturally. Uh, I'm a person a little more introverted, so never was an outgoing person, kind of making friends here and there, just kind of everybody knows me, never that type of person. So uh, for me, the biggest challenge is sales. Some people that I've heard, especially in that painting business pro circle, um, they're great at sales. I mean, they, they can sell everything, and it's just one of their biggest, sticking points is production to where me it's actually backwards i'm a very good production guy I could produce my whole i would love to just do production but sales is my big and sticking point um definitely have done a couple things to improve that now that's actually working but they don't want to claim victory before you know i actually uh, have a proven track record of it so still biggest challenge this year too uh, so that was my biggest challenge to just the sales rate the wins that we had that year is uh, we actually sold at the highest ticket that we've ever done. So I uh, pretty much am at 50% profit margin. So, you know, for example, if labor materials are 2,000, I'm charging 4,000. If labor materials are 3,000, I'm charging 6,000. So 50% because, and we pay the subs 50% too. Now, since we raised the total price, I can actually pay my guys more now. So that's how I'm able to retain my subs who were 
I had one sub that he actually stopped working for me that year four, uh, but year five, he came back and we, you know, we've, we're still working with him to, to this day. Uh, so, so that's just because I think the reason he came back was because now we're able to pay him a little bit more. So I think just raising that profit, um, the percentage of profit made per job actually allows me to pay guys more because now I have 50% of 3,800 is less than 50% of 4,300, right? So even though it's a $500 difference, I'm paying that sub an extra 250, which helps them cover some of this cost. So, so that was a big win, uh, selling at the highest price I've ever sold. And then uh, I do have better systems for interior estimating. So through the Paying Business Pro course, again, sorry for talking so much about them, but uh, they do have a system that allows me to just type in the, the amount of doors, trim work, baseboards, uh, ceiling, wall space, and we get a price. So have a very good estimating standards for that. Um, not enough to feel confident to quote it out on the spot, but it's a, it's a very helpful thing there that they provide. And then uh, we are getting tons of leads coming in uh, from Facebook, like I said, a ton from our website. So, so definitely we're always posting on Instagram. I try to post there at least two times a week. Uh, Facebook, same thing. Whatever we post on Instagram automatically gets shared to Facebook. And then from Facebook, I download the pictures. Uh, upload them to Pinterest, to Tumblr, to Twitter, so that way my content is everywhere. So when you search up our, com our company name on Google, you'll have it from all over the place. And uh, and yeah, we're getting a bunch of leads through our website, like I was saying, just reviews. We're at 105 reviews now, so ton of reviews that we're getting now. And uh, and yeah, just kind of being consistent, making sure to put yard signs on all our job sites that we're working in. And uh, obviously our vans, our employee guys, uh, their brands are marked up. Our subs are not. So so that is one thing maybe to take a look at and that'll be a topic for a different day. But that was kind of the biggest wins. So just getting a ton of leads through different sources and that's not including the paid lead services like Home Advisor, Crapjack Networks, uh, Painter's Choice. So I haven't even used any of that, which this year I might have to just to get more leads coming in quickly because we got a lot of crews working for us. We got about five crews working now. One is our employee crew, four is sub crews. So a lot of people to keep busy now. And uh, and obviously they have to have work. Um, I'm not too pressured like I am for the employee crew. Employee crew, I have to have work. So was, you know, they can have a, like a week maybe slow and then pick back up. But definitely that's one of my biggest goals, keep them busy so that way they stay with us long term. So that's it for all three years. I went really fast, I'm talking fast, I'm out of breath a little bit, but hopefully that kind of helps you get an idea of what we're doing. Um, again, the main purpose of this channel is more to document my progress for me to look back. Like I, I went back, saw those two videos uh, that I did about a couple years ago, first year, second year. And uh, and I think definitely the biggest thing, uh, if I could go right now, time travel, tell, tell that person that I was back then, you know, uh, one of the biggest tips or some motivation, it would be to, to pretty much keep pushing forward that it will be worth it because a lot of times and, and a lot of pretty much like every week or every day that I had a challenge, the first year, second year, I think it always goes through everybody's mind when starting a business is, is it worth it? Should I even be doing this? Am I just wasting my time? Um, is it even going to be like, I have more stress now running this business than I did working. Like, why am I even doing this if I'm making less money? And honestly, if I could go back to that, that kid, because I was 18, 19, I would tell him it's absolutely worth it. You might not see it. You don't start the business, just like Eric Barstow says in Painting Business Pro. You don't start this business for years one, two, or three. You start this business for years four, five, six, and beyond. And I can tell you right now, I'm 23 years old now. Um, you're 2023 20, here. You know, I'm making personal income, making over six figures uh, now. So it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, I did close to six figures in personal income last year. And then from there, kind of the, the year before about 80, the year before about 60, the year before that about 45. And the year before that, believe it or not, only eight, 8K. Because um, I've invested a lot of that back into the business. So uh, that's kind of one of those things I, I would tell myself. And if you're looking to start a painting company, I tell you to, it's gonna be very challenging. I mean, you're gonna wanna quit. There's gonna be times where you're questioning yourself if it's gonna be worth it. But I, I will tell you that as long as you have a proven system to scale that business and you start off with a strong foundation, 
then absolutely it'll be worth it, but it won't be worth it until years four, five, and six. So you have to be patient those first three years. Don't expect to be a six-figure earner in those first three years if you were making 50K in your last job. It's just not gonna be there. At best, first year, you might be around the same as you did in your last job, but I wouldn't hold yourself to the standard of years two already making six figures. Now, not to say that you can't, but it's not something that's average or common. So I don't know your background. If you're a sales stud, you probably probably can't grow this business, to, but you have to have good systems in place because even if you're good sales, you need to know the paint knowledge, you need to know how to put out a job, you need to, need to know the sales uh, min, minutia, I think it's what, the, what it's called, or, or not minutia, the nomenclature, that's the word, uh, of the painting business. So you need to know that, uh, which is things you can learn. I mean, I started, I never was a painter. Um, you know, my dad was a painter, but I'm not the painter. So, but I've learned a lot through him and through my paint rep and through failure that now you ask me pretty much anything and pretty much I've seen it. So you tell me something happened here, the walls are oozing some sap. I've had that happen. I've had walls oozing some sap that you can't even explain what that is, but I know what it is, surfactant leaching. So th there's things that y sometimes you can't know until you don't have them happen to you. So don't worry about that. If you don't have, if you want to start a paint business, but you don't know uh, much about the industry, you can. But the thing, biggest thing I'd recommend, and I'll get out of here, stop talking so much, is having a good foundation, good system. And really the only way to get a good system besides spending 10 years learning this on your own is going to be to buy the painting business pro course. Um, I don't make any money plugging them at all, uh, but it's just one of those things I definitely recommend. It's going to shortcut the time to get to where I'm at for sure. And honestly, you're spending, it's, it's, I know it's expensive now. I mean, when I started, it was only 500 bucks. Now it's a couple thousand. So I know it's expensive, but I promise you will make your money back. Everything Eric Barstow has made, I bought and everything I bought has made me money tenfold. So I can't recommend it enough. Um, look into it. Yeah, you know, if, if you don't have no money to invest, look at all his free YouTube videos. I mean, there's so much content that he makes. It's great. And so, so that's pretty much everything I got for you. If you guys can do me a favor, just comment down below um, anything you want to see. I'll try to make more videos. The reason I haven't been making videos is, like I said, just so busy running this business, actually growing, actually doing the thing that it just has kept me busy. Um, and I mean, it's a lot, you know, I've been growing. I mean, I'm sure I look different than I did those first two years and uh, probably don't have as much a beard anymore. But you know, honestly, one of those things that the reason I had the beard, one of them was I just kind of wanted to try it out, first of all. Second of all, just to kind of look older. But now I'm in a position where I don't care. You know, I'm not really a fan of the beard anymore. So I can actually trim shorter, right? I, I can kind of be myself a little bit more, bring my own swag to the, to the estimates and, uh, and not feel like they think I'm a kid. Because that's one of the biggest things, especially if you're starting out young, thinking that you know, your customers are gonna think you're just a kid. Um, which it might be true, but honestly, you know, it just comes down to knowledge, how confident you speak. And right now I'm to, I'm in a position now where I'm an authority. I mean, you go search me up. I'm a legit company. I've been doing this for six years now. This is my sixth year. I have 105 reviews. I got bands. I got guys. I got five crews working. I'm not just a kid. I got things going. You know, we've done houses in the neighborhood more than likely. We get calls all the time. We're going to be in your neighborhood. So, and I've improved even about my speaking skills. Like I said, sales is my biggest challenge. This year, my biggest challenge is still sales. Uh, I got the leads coming in. So if I get sales figured out, I'll be able to get to a production manager doing all my production and I'll be just focused on sales. So it's a lot to learn. Uh, I know it's a lot to cover in one video. So please do me that favor. Just comment down below, like the video, please. Subscribe for more videos. So that way I know you guys are actually finding value in this video. Um, I'm not very professional with these videos to be honest with you. So if you got to the end, sorry about that. There's going to be weird cuts, weird thumbnails. There's going to be weird stutters, times that I go on tangents, but it's just, I can't edit these videos to a professional level because it's just me and I'm actually doing the business. So, uh, in order to do these videos, I have to just kind of do them in one take. So there's going to be weird, awkward times, but, um, you know, that's the way it is. It comes out, however it turns out, but I want to get this info out there for, Anybody in my position that you know is looking to start a company that's young or that's old, and uh, and they're looking for what to re reasonably expect in their progress throughout the year. So hope it helps, and we'll catch you on the next video.